بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفثه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, This is the seventh lecture in our series of uh, Tajweed al-Quran in the English language and uh, we are going to continue with the Makharij al-Huruf In fact we're going to start with the Makharij al-Huruf You can say the first two lectures were just uh, introductory lectures on what uh, makharij are and some of the mistakes uh, which people make while reciting the Quran. So we're going to start uh, with the makharij today. This word basically, um, so first of all, why do we need to study the makharij? Because the ulama have said that there are four steps and four stages in order to perfect your tajweed. First of them is that you know the makharij al huruf you know the proper place of pronouncing every letter, you know their proper articulation point. This is the first step. The second step is that you know the characteristics of the letters, you know the sifat al huruf and you uh, perfect those for after you perfect the makharij. The third thing is that you know the rules of the tajweed, you know the ahkam al tajweed. And they include that you know where you're supposed to where you're supposed to do ikhfa, where you're supposed to do iqlab, and so on. There are different uh, rules of tajweed, which we will study inshallah. And the fourth and the, the one of the most important things that you practice the three above. So the, you practice the three above points. You study the makharij, you study the sifat, you study the rules, and then you apply all of these in your qira'ah and you practice a lot until it becomes easy for you. Just like when you start your drive, it's uh, you have to think that you have to wear the seat belt, uh, you have to look at your mirrors, you have to adjust your seat, you have to make sure the car is uh, n not in any gear when you're starting it, then you have to uh, press the clutch, then you put the gear, and so on. And you have to think all of this in your first uh, or day or first week or so on. But as you get used to it, after a month passes or two months pass, then it becomes something natural for you. You just sit in the car, you do everything, you start your car and you start driving. You don't even think about doing what you're doing. You just your your body is just used to it. You're you're tuned into it, and uh, you just do it naturally. So the same thing applies to the juid as well, and uh, most of the things we do in our life, uh, as they say, that practice makes a man perfect. So the more you practice. The more your tongue and your mouth and obviously your, your mind will get used to reading that way. And uh, it will eventually get so easy that you'll just read it naturally without any effort on your part. You won't have to think about what you're doing. But the first uh, few months will be very hard for you because you'll have to think on every letter. What are uh, What is the articulation point? What are the sifat? What are the characteristics of this letter? and uh, what rules do I have to apply when I'm reciting two words together. So you'll have to think about all these things in the first few months, but then it'll start to get easy until it becomes a natural thing for you, inshallah ta'ala. So the word makharij is the plural of the word makhraj. And the makhraj, it literally means the exit point of something. So for example, if you're in a house, the door is the makhraj of the house because you get out of the house from the door. And uh, if you talk about tajweed, then makhraj here, it means the exit point of the letters. So there are different points of your mouth and your throat and your tongue. So the place from where the letter comes out, that is known as the makhraj of the harf, the makhraj al-harf. And uh, the harf, uh, which we studied before as well, which I'll, I'll just repeat that, it literally means the side of something. But uh, over here, the, the terminological or the scientific definition will be that the sound which is coming out of a makhraj which is muhaqqaq or muqaddar. Now what is a muhaqqaq makhraj and what is a muqaddar makhraj? We discussed that as well, which I'll, but I'll just repeat that. Uh, a muhaqqaq makhraj is a makhraj where the sound goes and stops at specific points of your, of your throat your tongue or your lips. So if the sound of a letter stops at a specific point at your throat or on your lips or your tongue, then it, the makhraj is muhaqqaq. 
But if it does not stop at any of these points, then the makhraj is muqaddar. And last time I, I was uh, discussing one question that whether uh, ghunna or the khayshum, it counts, the, the, so the sound that comes out of khayshum, it counts as a makhraj muqaddar or muhakkak. And I said that I'll think over it and I'll look into it or I'll ask my teachers if I don't understand it. But alhamdulillah, later on when I was thinking upon it, I understood that if you just look at the definition, the answer is in the definition itself. We say that the makhraj muhakkak is the makhraj when a voice stops at, when the sound stops at one of the points of lisan, shafatan, and uh, halq. So it's only your throat, your halq, your tongue, your lisan, and your shafatan, your lips. So if it's not in, in any of these three points, uh, in any uh, of the specific points in these three locations, it's not makhraj muhakkak. And uh, then I remember one more thing that ghunna, even the ulama differ whether we are supposed to count ghunna, uh, we are supposed to say that ghunna has a makhraj or not because ghunna is not a letter itself. It's a it's, uh, characteristic, it's a sifa. So just like for example, Imam al Jazri says, وَغُنَّةٌ مَخْرَجُهَا الْخَيْشُومُ And his son, when he was explaining his, his father's poem, he said that my father has made a mistake over here because Qunna should not be counted in the مخارج الحروف. It is a characteristic of the letter. It is a sifa. And it should, be not, it should not be counted in the مخارج. So the ulama differ whether it should be counted or not. And then other scholars like Sibu Wei, they said that no, we won't say that uh, Khayshum has the makhraj of Ghunna, but we'll say that Khayshum has the makhraj of Noon Khafifa and Mim Khafifa. So anyway, this is a, a scholarly debate on how we should define the, define, uh, the makhraj of Khayshum. Uh, and we don't need to get into the details right now. So in order to find the makhraj of any uh, harf, whether it is muhakkak or muqaddar, what you do is that you make that letter sakin first of all. For, for example, you have ba. So you make sakin, the letter ba, and then you put a hamza before it. So you put a hamza before ba, and then you see if your sound stops at any point, then that makhraj is muhakkak. But if it does not stop, then that makhraj is muqaddar. So if I say ab, my voice is obviously stopping at my lips. So I know that the, the lips are a part of uh, the, the three, uh, three places which we defined uh, that have makhraj muhakkak. So my sound is stopping at my lips. So I would say that the makhraj of ba is shafatan and it is makhraj muhakkak. Because I can identify the point where my, my, my voice or my sound is actually stopping. And that is my lips. And similarly, other words like an, ash, al, ah, as, akh, al, aq. All these are makhraj muhakkak. Because your voice either stops at your tongue or your throat or your lips. As for the sounds like a, u, e, these sounds do not stop at any point. They only stop when you stop your breath. So these sounds are known as makhraj muqaddar. And they are only three letters, which are the huruf al-mad or al-huruf al maddiyah So these three letters only are counted in makhraj muqaddar. The remaining ones are makhraj muhaqqaq. Um, we already discussed that the ulama have differed in uh, dividing the number of letters of the Arabic language, whether they're 28 or 29. And similarly, uh, the makharij, they're also divided into two subcategories. They are, and that is again based on the, the division of the huruf into two further categories. One of them is, are known as asliya, which are the base ones. And the other ones are known as fariya, which are the branched or the branch, uh, you, you could say, yeah, far, yeah, far is basically a branch. So the branched out makharaj or the branched out huruf. Uh, we'll go into the details of that once we study the makharaj al-asliyah because they are the the basic makharaj. And once you understand that, inshallah, it will get easy. So the ulama differed into whether uh, the, the uh, what, what is the exact uh, number of makharaj. And when I say makharij here, I'm talking about 
uh, specific points of articulation. I'm not talking about the general five makharij we discussed last time. So the general category is uh, jawf and halq and lisan and shafatan and khayshum. These are the five main categories of makharij. Now all of uh, each of these have certain specific points, which are the makharij al khassa. So the makharij al raisiya or the makharij amma, they are five. And according to some scholars, only four, if they don't count the jawf, as we will see, then um, there are only four. And uh, the specific points in these four or five, they are known as makharij khassa, or the specific, or, or makharij fara'iyya, if you want to call them. So they are the sp specific points where you, uh, where your voice comes and stops, and they, uh, in, in this number, the ulama have deferred. So the first uh, point of view of some scholars, and this group includes Al-Khalil bin Ahmad Al-Farahidi and Imam bin Al-Jazari as well, and it is the view of the majority of the scholars and the view that we will adopt as well, and that is that the number of makharij is equal to 17. And they say it's 17 because we will, we will study how they, are seven, they make it 17, but just to give you a brief uh, idea, they include Jawf, as a separate makhraj. They say that wa, sorry, u, e, a, these sounds have a separate makhraj and they take it as the jawf. And uh, the other group which says that uh, the makhraj are, are only 16, that includes Imam Sibawai and Imam Shatabi. And they say that it's 16 because they do not count uh, the jawf as a separate makhraj. In fact, they count these three sounds with their original muhaqqaq uh, makharij. For example, if you talk about a, then they say that a is part of the makharij of uh, hamza, which is the halq, the, the aqsa halq, a. So they say that a is, includes a. And similarly, when you say wa from your shafatan, uh, from your lips, uh, they say that this sound uh, the sound of U will be included with this makhraj. And similarly, the sound of E will be included with the makhraj of Ya, which is the wasat al lisan, the center of your tongue. So they don't don't count the jawf, and therefore they say that the makhraj, makhraj are only 16. As for the third group, they include the scholars like uh, Imam al farra and al jarmi and Qutrub. So these ulama, these imams, they say that the makharij are only 14. And uh, how do they make it 14 from 17? First of all, they don't count the jawf as the second group does not count. And uh, that makes it 15, the, uh, sorry, that makes it 16 from 17. And then uh, they decrease two more by counting the makharij of ra and noon and uh, um, there's one more, there's Ra and then there's Noon and then there's uh, Lam, yes. So they count Ra, Lam and Noon because all of these three letters are very close to each other. So the first group, they, they say that Lam and Ra and Noon, each of these letters has a separate place of uh, pronunciation, separate articulation point. But this group says, uh, and, and even the second group agrees with the first group. But this group, the third one, they say that no. Lam and Ra and Noon, they have the same makhraj. So we're going to count that as a single makhraj. So it's only a matter of counting what you count. I mean, all of them agree what the sound is going to be like, but they just differ on the number of the articulation points uh, of the sound. So this group says it's 14 because they don't consider Ra, Lam and Noon to have, have separate place of articulation points, separate articulation points. Uh, and that decreases two more and comes down to 14. Um, so um, the, the, the details of these uh, 17 makharij that we're going to study is, is going to be something like this, that al-jawf uh, is going to have one makharaj, one specific makharaj, al-halq is going to have three specific makharaj, al-lisan is going to have ten specific makharaj, shafatan are going to have two specific makharij and al khayshum will have one makharij. So starting with the first one, which is al-jawf. Al-jawf literally means an empty space, al-khala. And istalahan, or uh, the scientific, or you can say, or uh, terminological 
definition uh, or I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, in, in this context of the Jweed, we say that al jawf means the empty space of the mouth and the throat. So the empty space of the mouth and the throat, that is known as al jawf And it has the makhraj of uh, three, uh, you can say letters, not, not letters. Yeah, you can say call them letters, the huruf al-mad. So I've already discussed what the huruf al-mad are. I don't need to go into much detail on this. But uh, they are only a, u, and e sound. And uh, they are also, the, the only thing you need to take care of is that they will become huruf al-mad when they are preceded by a similar harqa. For example, alif, it's supposed to be preceded by fatha. And it is always preceded by fatha. There is no other way that any other harqa can come before it. And as for ya and uh, wow, you need to take care because ya can be, fall, can be preceded by a fatha as well. But, and, but then it becomes ya lean. It does not become ya mad. And uh, it, so in order to make it ya mad, it should be preceded by a kasra, e like this. And as for wow, it should be preceded by a similar haraka, which is bamma, u. And if it is preceded by a fatha, it becomes waw, lean. Now, the name of these huruf is huruful maddi wal lean. Huruful maddi wal lean. So, their complete name is huruful maddi wal lean. And normally, people do get confused when they when you tell them that these are huruful lean and these are huruful maddi wal lean. So, they can, they think that when you say huruful maddi wal lean, you're actually referring to huruful lean. But huruf lin are waw and ya when they are sakin preceded by a fatha like li ila fi quraish so quraish and uh, saif and uh, uh, such words uh, jawf jawf itself is uh, having a waw preceded by a fatha so these words are having huruf al lin as for the sounds of e and u when they're preceded by a similar haraka behind them then they are known as huruful maddi walin and when they are preceded by a fatha then they are known as huruful lean only so that is uh, something which you need to differentiate about uh, on and uh, the last thing i think would be that there there are different names of these these uh, letters these sounds they are known as huruful maddi walin and they are also known as huruf al jawfiya from the jawf and they're also known as huruf al hawaiya hawaiya from hawa hawa your air the your the, the air that comes out of your mouth or the breath that comes out of your mouth they're based because as i told you before these uh, sounds these letters they only stop when you stop your breath or when you stop your hawa they don't uh, stop at a specific point and their makhraj is muqaddar and therefore they only stop when the sound uh, of uh, sorry when the breath stops or when you make it stop so based on this they're named uh, three different names huruful maddi walin and huruful jawfiya and huruful hawaiya and uh, we will stop uh, we'll stop our lecture here today and inshallah from tomorrow we'll start with the huruf uh, huruful halq which are hamza ha ain ha ain ha ghain kha and uh, I'll, I'll keep a slow place, uh, pace uh, in Makhadij because I don't want to uh, you know, discuss a lot of Makhadij in one day so they get mixed up with you. And it's better that you keep memorizing the Ash'ar and keep practicing because the practice is the key in learning Makhadij. If you, if you want to leave Tajweed, just leave the practice. If you, if you leave practice, it's as if you have left Tajweed. So uh, keep practicing and if there's any confusion, you can ask me on, on the group or you can send me a personal message.